How's it going, everybody? Welcome to RacerXOnline.com, and guess what? It's that time of year already. It's 2023 season, but basically what this is, a 2022.5 KTM 450 Factory Edition. You guys have been seeing Aaron Plessinger, Cooper Webb, riding these bikes Saturday night at the Supercross races. So today we're at Paula Raceway, a.k.a. Fox Raceway, and we're going to put this bike to the test. We're going to talk about if this bike is better than the previous year version. And also I'm gonna bring in an older gentleman that I think is the right demographic for this bike. He's in his 50s, he rides KTMs, and he's gonna give you guys a little comparison on what he thinks this bike is compared to his bike that he buys every year. So he's one of those KTM owners that likes to get a bike every year. So I thought, why not bring someone in that can relate to you guys, the KTM owners, what it's like to ride. I'll be on the other side of the fence. I'll be comparing to other machines that I have ridden so far this year and what this thing right here does better and worse than those bikes out there today. So stay tuned for a full breakdown. We're gonna run through this whole machine and get you guys the scoop that you need before you make your $12,000 purchase on a new KTM 450 factory edition. New 2022 KTM 450 SXF Factory Edition. I got my guy right here, 59 and a half. He made sure to give me 59 and a half years old. Chris Cole, 230 pounds. He is the perfect demographic for this bike. I feel like with this bike being upwards to $12,000, you got to have some money on hand to be able to get one of these suckers and not make your family mad, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so, quick impression for me. KTM is like my second favorite bike to ride. I'll just throw that out there. Like, I'm really big on a Yamaha, but I really like to ride this bike. The things that I didn't like about a KTM last year were lean angle traction and lean angle compliancy on this frame. So the frame last year always seemed to be a little bit wallowy and snap back. It didn't feel like I have a lot of um, compliance slash traction and just overall comfort. So if I got on a soft track with 180s and lots of ruts, it was great. But a rough track with square edge, I didn't really like it that much. Now with the changes that KTM made, they made the, the frame stiffer. I really like that feeling when I'm leaning here at Paul. There's some rollers. I'm sure Spencer got that on camera where I'm just on the edges of the tires and the, and the bike just seems planted. So, Chris, you're a guy that comes from a KTM background. You prefer KTMs. We talked about this. You get the new generation bikes when they come out. Now we're on a new generation bike. What do you think compared to your motorcycle? Just an overall feeling. I was really impressed with it. Actually, I, I had fun riding it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the spring is way too soft for me. And uh, I'm not a big fan of the air forks. I never have been. I've probably spent an hour total riding on air forks. Um, but 
but the the ergonomics of the bike uh the foot pegs the way that you can grip it it's symmetrical on both sides of the the bike it just you know and these gigantic shrouds i mean when i first saw those i was like dude those look they concern me but um they're a they're a plus i i really like this little pocket area where your legs go and for a, a bigger older guy uh hanging on is something that's really important to me and i really felt like i could hang on to this bike you know, these bars, uh, I, I run stock KTM bars, but I have them raised up with, uh, you know, my mounts, and uh, I would do that as well. But, you know, I'm 6'3", so, you know, it's it's a... So, yeah, engine really quick for you guys that want to know, coming from uh, last year's KTM. You're not going to get a ton of power like a Yamaha down low. There's not, like, this explosive down low power. It still has that same engine linear character, but I feel like everything's just been enhanced a little bit, if I can say that. So RPM response is better. I feel like FI tuning is crisper. There's more mid-range power. There's more top-end power. This thing revs to the moon. I always got to remember when I get back on a KTM, Chris, that I can actually use second gear. Like, with my Yamaha, I'm in third gear. I can lug it. But I actually can downshift second, get out of the corner, and don't have to shift to third till halfway down the straightaway. And the plus side of things for me this year on this factory edition is I can actually lug it. I couldn't do that last year with this engine. So now I can actually use third gear. The gearing has been changed, 1351 gearing this year. So uh, the ratio is a little bit different. But now I can roll my corners in third gear. I have enough recovery. I'm a little fan of the hydraulic clutch, and I'm back in the meat of the power. So it's a blend of... It's the best of both words, uh, worlds for me. So I have a more RPM response, more excitement, and I can lug it. But yet, it still has a lot of rear wheel traction. Yeah, in the morning, my first ride, I did not like the motor. I felt like it, it was way too on, off, on, off, on, off. And then uh, the, the aggressive map, the map one, which is the white map, it took me all day to figure out w which color was <laughs> which number, but, uh, but the white map was the one that I ended up liking the most, and it had the least amount of engine braking, and I, I kind of adjusted to it, and uh, I think I would put uh, maybe a 49 or even a 48 tooth rear sprocket on this thing. I'd like to try that. To mellow it out down low. Yeah, and I think it would make second gear way more usable and a little less jerky, and I think it might make it, you know, uh, uh, well, and, and I, I personally think this motor was amazing. I was blown away with how much power it had. Um, it, it, That's not always the best thing for older guys, right? No, no definitely. And, and I, would, I would have that tuned down. Uh, I like my motors to rev to the moon. I like them to have a, you know, a good, uh, a good solid mid-range, but um, I don't want to have the handlebars jerked out of my hands. Uh, you know, at a, at a, you know, be below a quarter throttle, uh, vet riders, you know, we're all, we're all carrying a few extra pounds that, and, and, uh, you know, it, it laid in a moto, you know, at Glen Helen, the track's rough and you're, you know, you're trying not to let go of the handlebars and to have a bike that's a little more compliant down there will help you finish those motos more successfully. And, and, and I definitely, uh, would want to address that in this bike, but, um, but, because of how overall that motor is, I mean, I think that you could you could really race this bike. I mean, you know, KTM's thing is ready to race. It, it, I would race this bike just like it is. I would go right now and race it. Um, but I would, I do think you could improve it without spending a lot of money. And, uh, you know, like the, the hop-up companies, you know, which I, I love my hop-up companies. Right. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I, I could see them not getting a lot of business here. Uh, you know, the, the fixes are much, much uh, uh, smaller. Yeah. Uh, suspension, I mean, it's not even a fair comparison. You know, I weighed 230, got a, a, you know, way too light of a spring. I had like 114 on the sag. Um, but I will say, when I was standing like through those rollers over there, yeah. I never felt like the front end was uh, uh, gonna. I was gonna lose the front end, and and I I guess thinking about it now, I think the air fork probably has something to do with that because I'm just not used to an air fork, um, and uh, but it definitely felt felt. Uh, you know, everybody says it felt planted, but it just felt secure. Like I was just I was. Uh, it didn't matter <clears throat> that that I was going over rollers and. Uh, um, you know, it was windy today, so I usually, I, I generally jump pretty much everything. Um, I wasn't jumping everything today. I would like to try it on a, a less windy day when I didn't think I would die doing that. But, uh, 
But a couple of times I got pushed over and and I I lost and the front end was like so far out that I thought, oh dude, I'm gonna crash and it and it gripped. And the stock tire, the MX33, I'm not a big fan of it. I run a, a 3S on my bike. I knew I liked this guy for a reason right here. Yeah. And uh, I, I tell you, that's the best I've ever felt a 3S perform. Uh, I, I w when, I, when we got here this morning, I looked at that. I'm like, oh, dude, this isn't going to be such a great day. But it, it's uh, something about this motorcycle. It definitely made that, that front tire grip. So for me, too, real quick on the map switch, there's a big difference. KTM really wanted us to feel the difference between the map one, map two, or wider green, however you want to look at it. On this map cluster here at the top button is map one, and the bottom button is map two, if you guys want to know. And also, this cluster has quick shift, we'll talk about that, and TC. So, map one, I'm a map one guy, and map two, I don't see, I don't think one media guy wanted to be on map two today it's a lot it's low end uh gives you more of that it gives you more rpm response it's really snappy so for me that's just way too much motor i would prefer not to go there um which is so drastic from last year where i wanted more motor from last year's bike i have it with this bike so on map one the quick shift i thought it was going to be a little bit gimmicky i'm not a big traction control guy i don't go traction control all the time but i would say what this thing does off the starts, I don't have to lit off the throttle. I'm wired because I'm old school and I just lit off the throttle and shift. But now you don't really have to do that. And when you have that in your brain, you have that here on the left hand side. You're like, OK, now I can like consciously don't have to roll my throttle off. Now, that's not to say I don't do that when I'm riding laps because I still go back to my normal programming and I lit off, but for the starts, I could see it being a benefit. So I really like that part of it. And you even said you preferred it. I, I was really wondering what it was gonna be like. I, I've, you know, through my whole entire riding career, I, I, I've been known to just keep the throttle pinned and pull up hard on the lever until it shifts. And, you know, and, and most transmissions would do that. Um, what this does is there's like one little pop where like it misses one fire and it's just enough to free up the transmission to, so that it's like if you pull up on that shift lever, it's immediately in the next gear and you, you almost feel no lag at all. Um, and I just, I turned it on uh, and I tried it, you know, uh, one, one ride with it off just because I wanted to get used to the bike in a, a normal uh, configuration. And then I turned it on and then I, I was like, man, I, I got to have this. this. It was really a, a, cool, a cool feature. Now, the traction control, and I've never been a fan of traction control. I don't like start maps. I don't like any of that. I want, I want it all in, in my hands and, you know, old school, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, I tried the traction control and I honestly couldn't tell the difference when it was on or off. And, uh, um, you know, I, maybe, maybe it felt like it had a little less power in a few situations, uh, which maybe was a good thing, but uh, I didn't like it. it you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was insignificant, but that quick shift, that is a really, really slick thing. Yeah, it's good to have options. KTM gives you a lot of options. Going to the chassis side of things, now this bike is weighed four pounds heavier than last year's bike. To me, I like that. That's a plus. I think some of my problem from last year where I talked about being on the edges of my tires, some of that was because it's so lightweight and it had uh, such a broad power band that it needed a little bit of weight to make it feel planted. I do feel that weight in corners a little bit. It still gets in good in area one. Area two, I got to force it down a little bit more. And then area three, it's, it's, it's fine. I would rather have a motorcycle that is a little bit more stable than sharp cornering if i could say that so this bike has a little bit more straight line stability doesn't corner quite as good for me but honestly in the in the grand scheme of things that is better for me so it's not a negative uh going to the stiffer frame that ktm did actually helped comfort again this is our first impression there's only a few bumps on the track but the bumps i did hit um i'm very aware of what they feel like on another bike and this is more comfortable than last year's KTM. So I'm I'm happy and excited to ride this bike more and I like where I'm going with this feeling. So um, again, I'm like you, I'm not a big air fork guy, but as you guys get these bikes, let these things break in six hours. 
Air forks take a long time to break in. Don't judge it so much in the first couple hours. It'll feel like a whole different fork when you get to about an hour six. It'll move more, and uh, it just feels sticky. And uh, when you have slap down landings like I saw you today, it just feels a little bit firm in your hand. So that'll help going forward after about six hours. But overall, can't really comment too much about the suspension. Not a lot of bumps, but typical air fork feel. Shock has improved. The rear end of the bike for me is where I notice the most difference. Acceleration traction is up. Uh, rear end compliance is up when I'm coming out of a corners and there's some square edge. A lot of rocks here today at Paul inside these ruts. Um, what we call cornering balance or cornering um, stability. It's better on this bike because I have more traction. Do you notice that? Yeah, and I actually did think this bike turned really good. And even at 114 millimeters of uh, sag, which is, I, I normally run about 107 to 108 on my bike. And uh, so what I felt like is I could cut down on the corners at will. And uh, like that little step thing, right right when you get on the track. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, it, it was like, you know, the jump is so close to the turn. And it's like it's like right on my edge of of uh, my ability, but I I felt like oh I, I got I can I can make this bike go there, and I felt like I could put the throttle to it and get over it. And I I hit it virtually every time, um, and uh, you know then I did like the way like it it likes to ride in the berm. So like if you if you're coming into a wide turn, enter the berm wide and follow it around and you could rail it really really nicely. And it, it and it didn't do any kind of weird thing in there. It didn't want to stand up, it didn't want to lay over. I I felt I felt natural. I felt like the bike was kind of uh an extension of my of my body. Yeah, corner stability is key in in trying to go fast on a dirt bike and this is a little bit improved for this model. Uh overall rider triangle for me, like Chris touched on this earlier in this uh, I like the foot pegs. Um, aftermarket companies are going to have a tough time selling pegs for this bike because I think the stock ones are so good. I like an orange seat. I like the rib cover. It's a little bit aggressive if you ride a lot, um, so you might want to tame that down a little bit. But overall, the color scheme of the bike is very attractive. Um, I'm not a big fan of the stock bars. If you go to an aftermarket bar like a Pro Taper bar, there's less vibration. You get a little bit more flex, and that'll help you. Uh, but, man, I do think this is a better motorcycle. Um, going up to $12,000, is it worth it? Do you think the difference between a standard model KTM, Chris, and going to this, is there that much difference for you? Well, you know. I, I guess mean, I should say standard model 2021, right, or 22. If, if we're comparing this to a 23 uh, in this bike, uh, if I had to go to a 23, I, I'd be disappointed because I do like the looks and the bling, and, and uh, you know, that is something that attracts me to this bike. Um, you know, it is cool to have something a little bit sooner than than is going to be out to the general public. Now, is it going to make me win in my you know 50 expert class? No, it's not. But uh, uh, but I'll I'll look cool. That's you know that's part of the battle right yeah. there. So for me, I mean, the money is definitely worth it. I I uh, you know it's like you know when I was you know 40 and kids were you know just about to go to college. It was like I was lucky to have any kind of motorcycle. So now, you know, it's like uh, I'm going to have the motorcycle that I want, and this is the one I want. And my, my next phone call when I leave here is going to be to my dealer to see when, when the expected date it is. So, Well, a little, couple of little things I want to mention as well. Um, the chain slacks, if you guys are wondering where to measure this. Um, KTM told me today 70 millimeters is the new standard for chain slack. So if you guys have one of these things, uh, because the swing arm has changed, the rear end changed, everything's lower, the drivetrain is lower, and so 70 millimeters is the right chain slack. Make sure you read your owner's manual when you get it. There's a lot of valuable information inside there, so just don't put that to the side. Read up, study, and learn about your motorcycle. It's $12,000. Treat it like that. So uh, hopefully you guys will come back. We're going to continue to ride this thing, go to more tracks. I'm going to evolve some settings. I'll get you guys some settings. Um, you can always hit me up, Chris, at KieferInkTesting.com. If you have more questions, we didn't cover anything that you uh, uh, that you would like to know about this bike. And, of course, um, always visit us, RacerXOnline.com. We have uh, race events. We have a lot of lifestyle stuff. We have tests. And, of course, RacerX Magazine. Yes, that's right, 12 issues, uh, $30. Are you a subscriber? I get all motorcycle magazines. See, I knew I liked this guy. He likes Dunlop 3S, and he subscribes to magazines. I knew it. 
Don't forget, $30, and you get 12 issues, a lot of fun stuff in there, and we'll see you very soon on the next test.